Hey, what's up, everybody? So I'm doing a bit of experimenting today. I actually started a TikTok account, which I've been um, reluctant to do. But I'm going to experiment and don't know if there's any useful. I've never been on TikTok other than seeing, you know, kind of useless, entertaining, you know, funny videos. But I wonder if you can use that platform for the good. So I'm going to be posting some stuff and I'm starting a uh, playlist of just short der videos like turking walking through and talking through some quotes and we're reading from some passages so here i'm going to read from the mystical theology of the eastern church on topics of uh, will um, sin fall and salvation here so it should be a rather quick video relatively very quick for my videos so the orthodox ascetic has special terms to denote the different activities of evil spirits in the soul the logismo are thoughts or images which rise out of the lower regions of the soul the subconscious prosvoli cannot be translated temptation it is rather the presence of some alien thought introduced into our consciousness from outside by the will of the adversary quote it is not sin says saint mark the hermit but a witness to our freedom close quote sin begins where there is syngathetesis the consent of the mind to some intruded thought or image or still more a certain interest and attention which already indicates the beginning of an agreement with the enemy's will for evil will always always presupposes freedom of consent Otherwise, it would be no more than a violent and external possession. Man sinned freely. But what constitutes original sin? The fathers distinguish many moments in this decision of free will which separates man from God. The moral and therefore personal moment is for all of them to be found in the disobedience to and transgression of the divine commandment. If man had not received the commandment in a spirit of filial love, he would have responded to the will of God with a complete sacrifice. He would detach himself willingly, not only from the forbidden fruit, but from every external object in order to live only for God, to aspire solely to union with him. The commandment of God marks out for the human will the way which leads to deification. The way of detachment from all that is not god human will has chosen the opposite way has become separated from god and has submitted to the tyranny of the devil saint gregory of nisa and saint maximus pay special attention to the natural aspect of sin instead of following its natural disposition towards god the human spirit has turned towards the world instead of spiritualizing the body it has itself entered into the stream of animal and sensory life and become subject to material conditions. St. Simeon, the new theologian, sees a progressive development of sin in the fact that man, instead of repenting, tries to justify himself before God. Adam declines all responsibility for Eve, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, and so makes God the root and cause of his fall. Eve accuses the serpent in this refusal to recognize that the unique origin of evil is in their own free will. Men reject the possibility of freeing themselves from evil and submit the freedom to external necessity. The will hardens and shuts itself off from God. Quote, man has closed up within himself the springs of divine grace, says Philaret of Moscow. Is the deprivation of grace itself the cause of the decadence of our nature? The idea of super supergatory grace, which is added to nature in order to, in order to order it towards God, is foreign to the tradition of the Eastern Church. As the image of God, the ordering of the human person was towards its archetype. Its nature tended spontaneously toward God by means of the will, a reasonable and spiritual power. Primitive righteousness rested on the fact that since man was created in the image of God, he could not be other than a good nature, ordered towards goodness, towards communion with God, and the acquisition of uncreated grace. 
If this good nature has come into disharmony with its creator, that can only be by reason of its power of determination from within. It is this which confers on man the possibility of acting and willing not only in conformity with his natural dispositions, but also in opposition to his nature, which he can pervert and render against nature. The decadence of human nature is the direct consequence of the free decision of man. He has willed it so, has deliberately placed himself in the position. A condition against nature must lead to the disintegration of being the, of the being of man, which dissolves finally in death, the last separation of nature, become unnatural and separate from God. There is no longer a place for uncreated grace in the perverted nature, where, according to St. Gregory of Nyssa, the mind, like a mirror, mirror turned about instead of reflecting God, receives into itself the image of formless matter, where the passions overthrow the original hierarchy of human being. The deprivation of grace is not the cause, but rather the consequence, of the decadence of our nature. Man has obstructed the faculty in himself for communion with God, has closed up the way by which grace should have poured out through him into the whole creation. This physical concept of sin and its consequences does not in the teaching of the Eastern Church exclude another element which must always be remembered, the personal moral aspect the aspect of fault and punishment. The two aspects are inseparably connected because man is not only a nature, but also a person placed over against the personal God and in a personal relationship with him. If human nature disintegrates as a consequence of sin, if sin introduces death into the created universe, for reason for this is not only the human freedom has created a new state, a new mode of existence in evil, but also that God has placed no limit to sin, allowing it to end in death. The wages of sin is death. We are offspring of a tarnished line, says St. Marcarius of Egypt. However, nothing in nature, not even the demons, is essentially evil. But sin, this parasite of nature rooted in the will, lives in it, makes it a prisoner of the devil himself a prisoner of his own will, frozen forever in evil. A new pole is created in the world opposite to the image of God in its self-illusory, but real in the will. And here is the paradox of its having existence in non-existence, as St. Gregory of Nyssa puts it. By way of the human will, evil has become a power infecting the whole creation. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. The universe, which, will, which still reflects the majesty of God, has at the same time acquired a sinister character, quote, the nocturnal side of creatures. In the phrase of the Russian theologian and philosopher, Prince E. Trubdesky, sin has been introduced where grace should reign, and instead of the divine plenitude, a gaping abyss has opened in God's creation, the gates of hell opened by the free will of man. Adam did not fulfill his vocation. He was unable to attain the union with God and the deification of the created order. That which he failed to realize when he used the fullness of his liberty became impossible to him from the moment at which he willingly became the slave of an external power. From the fall until the day of Pentecost, the divine energy deifying and uncreated grace was foreign to our human nature, acting on it only from the outside and producing created effects in the soul. The prophets and righteous men of the Old Testament were the instruments of grace. Grace acted upon them, but did not become their own as their personal strength. Deification, union with God by grace had become impossible. But the plan of God was not destroyed by the sin of man. The vocation of the first Adam was fulfilled by Christ, the second Adam. God became man in order that man might become God to use the words of Irenaeus and Athanasius, echoed by the fathers and theologians of every age. However, this work finished by the incarnate word is seen primarily by fallen humanity in its most immediate aspect, as the work of salvation, the redemption of the world captive to sin and death. Fascinated by the Felix culpa, we often forget that in breaking the tyranny of sin, our Savior opens 
to us anew the way of deification, which is the final end of man. The work of Christ calls out to the work of the Holy Spirit. 